In this tutorial we'll take a look at creating the toolpaths for the three-legged stall assembly you can see on the screen. Now these vectors were created and edited in a previous tutorial and that tutorial can be accessed through the related video section within this tutorial browser. So we'll start by opening an existing file. File open and we'll pick the three-legged stall vectors that were created in the previous tutorial. And here you can see presented on the screen a simple set of vectors that represent the outline for our three-legged stall assembly. Okay, so now we're ready to start machining, so I'm going to raise the toolpath tab and initially come and set up our material. Now this particular part has been designed to be made out of three-quarter inch ply, which means the width of our slots we can see here are exactly three-quarters of an inch, and they would need to be further modified if the material thickness was different. So we can assume three-quarters is what we're going to be using for the thickness. Moving down now, we're going to set up our XY data in the lower left-hand corner, which can be shown by the red square in the bottom left-hand corner of our 2D view. And then we need to consider where the Z0 is going to be set, whether it's going to be on the material surface or on the machine bed, i.e. the top of the spoil board. Now, given the fact that we're going to need to be cutting all the way through our material, we need to account possibly for any minor inaccuracies in the thickness of the material and make sure that we're always cutting through the material down to the spoil board surface, in which case we do need to set that to be machine bed. That will take account of any of those material thickness inaccuracies and we'll be cutting down to the machine bed rather than an incremental distance from the top of the material. Now we move down to set up our clearance and plunge and they're currently set to 0.2 of an inch. And then we've got our home position, which by default um, has been set to half an inch here, but must always be a small distance above the clearance. So I will OK that now and we're ready to start moving forward with the tool pathing. OK, initially we need to select all the vectors. So I'm going to pick all my vectors either from the screen. Similarly, I could do this from the menus with Edit, Selection, Select All Vectors. And notice there's a shortcut Control A. So I'll do it from the menu first. And click off the page and then use Control A. So holding Control A down on the keyboard. And all those three options select all the vectors on the screen. I'm going to move across now to the Profile Toolpath icon, which will raise all of the parameters that we need to modify and we're going to start by looking at the cutting depths. So we're going to start at the top of the material okay? and notice that the start depth and cut depth here these are relative to the top of the surface of the material and do not relate to the fact that we have set our Z0 at the top of the machine or the spoil board. So these values that we are entering into cut depths are incremental from the top of the material. So our start depth will be at the top of the material, hence zero, and we're going to cut down to a full depth of the material being 0.75, but I could put in Z equals, and that will actually set that to 0.75. The tool I'm going to select here um, will actually be a quarter inch end mill, so I'm going to come back into my menu now and select the quarter inch, and now I'm just going to move across and edit the number of passes. I actually want three passes ideally at a quarter inch step. So I'm just going to modify the parameters just for this particular uh, toolpath itself. So I'm going to set that to 0.25 and notice that the number of passes have changed from 4 to 3. So we're going to have an even 0.25 step down until we meet the spoil board. I'm now going to move down and set which side of the vectors we want to machine. So it's going to be outside. And then we've got the cutting direction here, whether we want to be doing climb or conventional. In most cases, we want to do climb, and that is by default selected. And then a very important parameter, which is the allowance offset. So whether we are overcutting or undercutting to the vector line. So given the fact that this is an assembly-based model, we want to make sure that we are adding some fit tolerance in order for one piece to slot into another. So ideally, we want to overcut these vectors uh, thereby taking uh, some extra material off the perimeter edges and also making the slots a little bigger so everything fits together. So I'm going to set an allowance offset of minus 0.02 so essentially we'll, each of the slots will be getting 20 thou bigger and then the outer perimeters will be sort of essentially becoming smaller by 20 thou so essentially we should have a 40 thou fit tolerance to work with. So going to now go down to the bottom and just set the name so this is going to be profile outer and we'll just calculate that now 
you can immediately see on the screen the uh, toolpaths. I'm just going to rotate that view now so we can see all those toolpaths in one. And we can instantly see there are three passes showing three different levels. And now I can move across and simulate those toolpaths. So I'm going to set the defaults here and of course it all moves rather quickly. So I'm now just going to tone down the speed using the slider here and reset the preview and then press play again and then we get an idea of how the tool is progressing through the job. Similarly if I come back to the 2D view now you can see here the vectors and I'm going to draw on top of the screen the toolpath. Now if we zoom in we can see the red line denotes the actual toolpath and the arrows show the direction of the tool as it moves round the vector. We also have a green dot which shows the entry and exit point from the particular loop. So it's the start of the vector essentially. We also have the ability to show that in solid view. So I'm going to basically come up to the top menu and toggle 2D drawing style and change that to solid. And we can see that clearly as this sort of uh, light blue color. And we can see the original vectors and how the tool is overcutting. So on this external boundary here we can see how we are cutting inwards by an extra 20 thou and if we here have a look at the basically the slot here we can see the slot is becoming bigger by 20 thou either side as well okay so now I'm just going to resize the 2d view so I'm going to click on the 2d view select F and that will bring it back to being full screen and at this particular stage we could move ahead now and close out the simulation or the preview form and go ahead and save that toolpath out but actually what I'm going to do is there's a few things I'd like to change here and modify uh, before I actually start creating some G-code. I'm going to start by taking a look at these tabletops, the lower left-hand corner of our 2D view here. And you can see its proximity uh, to one of the legs. So I'd like to sort of widen the gap between those two. So I'm just going to box pick now around the vectors that represent that tabletop and just click on it again to go into transform mode then holding down the alt key on the keyboard because I want to move it just parallel or along the x-axis so I'm going to hold the alt key down select the left hand key on the, my mouse and just move it to the left now you can see that is moving now parallel to the x-axis and I'm happy with the increase in gap there so I'm going to let that go you can see that the 2D, the solid 2D preview is not updated and similarly the toolpath hasn't so I'm just going to come back and double click on the toolpath which will open the toolpath form with all the existing parameters and come straight back down and recalculate that's flipped me into the 3D view and you can see that the toolpath does not match the simulation so I'm going to reset that preview now and now press play and we can see that that preview has been updated to reflect the change and now we have a much larger gap between the tabletop and the leg. The toolpath preview shows another issue here which is how are we going to support the small slithers of material left from the profiling of the inside of the slots and it's clear that in most cases we're not going to be able to support them and they may break away and cause a problem so what we'd ideally like to do is to use a different toolpath strategy possibly pocketing to remove the entirety of these pockets so I'm going to come back to the 2D view now okay so I'm going to deselect all the vectors and just Okay, so I'm going to deselect all the vectors and just pick those representing the slots. So I'm going to box pick the slots on the top of the table here. And holding shift now, I will pick those that are on the base, making sure I don't select the outer boundary as well. And come across and close out from the preview and then up to the pocket toolpath. So uh, like the original profile toolpath, this needs to be full depth. So it's going to be Z equals, which will bring in the material thickness. I'm going to select not the eighth inch end mill but the quarter inch end mill and immediately that's changed the number of passes to four but uh, in this case I'd like to override that now and set a depth of 0.25 to make sure that we are getting exactly three passes and okay that moving further down I can set the obvious the uh, uh, strategy with which will machine within that pocket I've selected raster which I'm happy with here and very important here is the pocket allowance what's nice here is the fact that we're going to break this up into the sort of slots and the outer profile toolpaths it means that we can just apply the allowance to the slots alone 
and cut to the vector for the remaining pieces. So I'm going to apply a negative allowance of 20 thou, which means that the slots themselves will um, essentially be 40 thou wider and 40 thou longer. And come down now and just change this to uh, pocket slots and calculate that toolpath. So we can see that on the screen now, but of course I need to now modify my original toolpath. Okay, so before we actually preview that now, I'm just going to come back and double click on the original profile outer and come back to the 2D view, and that shows the vectors that are currently being used to create that toolpath. So I'm now going to deselect the back of the screen and then just pick the vectors that represent what I now want to machine. Okay, and I can come down now and set the allowance. The allowance, I could leave uh, a negative allowance here or I could actually set that to zero now because the negative allowance is being just applied to the slots, depending upon, of course, how much allowance I want to have for the fit and just calculate that. Now that the toolpaths have been created, we need to give some thought as to which order these toolpaths should actually be running. Given the fact that we have the outer profiling, this should ideally be done as a secondary operation. So I'm going to move this down the list, and the first thing we're going to do is the pocket slots, followed by the profiling of the outer vectors. So now let's simulate that, so I'm going to reset the preview, just come back to an isometric view now, and select the pocket slots as the first item. The speed has been turned right down, and we can play. Moving down, I'll now select the outer profile toolpath and run that. And there we have the completed part. Now, should you wish to make any more edits to the profile toolpath, such as lead in, lead outs, or the start position, or the order of the vectors in terms of how they're going to be machined, then please refer to the profile toolpath guide, which is one of the related videos in the tutorial browser. This now brings this tutorial to a close.